Hello, this is Burn, and if you keep falling for men who don't end up committing to you, on today's video, I want to share seven specific steps you can use to change your attraction style so you can inspire quality men to pursue you and most important of all, propose to you. Hello, this is Burn. Welcome to another edition of BurnMendez.com a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, and heart-centered women how you can attract the man you want and enter the relationship you create without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques. If this is your first time here, and this is a subject that deeply interests you, make sure to click the subscribe button to be notified of new episodes as they come out. So, what is the problem? If you're watching this video, more likely than not, you've fallen for guys who on paper seem to be a great catch, everything you hope for, and sometimes not just on paper, but you feel something about them. There's a chemistry, they are charming, they seem to know what they want in some parts of their life that make you find him a great catch. But when push comes to shove, they don't pursue you at the level that you need to, or they pursue you for a relationship that doesn't end up in long-term commitment and marriage and family, which is probably what you're hoping to create with a man. So when that takes place again and again, it's typically because you have an attraction style that is inconsistent with the end result that you want. And the problem with attraction styles is that you were probably born with one and went through life learning bits and pieces of who to go for and who to feel attracted to. So there's an emotional component to it. There's a biochemical uh, wiring, including your own brain, that's specific and different from other people's brains that make you go for something versus something else. And then there's, of course, what you learned and saw in the media and saw your parents teach you and saw your friends and it's acceptable in your culture and society. So there's multiple aspects of this type of attraction style. So an attraction style, to be clear, is the set of unconscious triggers behaviors and learned experiences that sum up to make you fall for a particular guy. Now, before I go forward and explain my seven steps for rewiring your nervous system and changing who you fall for if the guy you're falling for is not the right guy for you, let me just share that if you want to take this video deeper than I can share in this few minutes, there is on the first link on the description of this video a way for you to watch my free training. So you click on the first link, you'll see a page that looks like this. You enter into my email and you can start watching my free video training that's gonna help you to go beyond the intellectual understanding of these concepts into the embodiment and practice of how to change in real life. Now, back to my seven steps. The first thing I'll share before even the seven steps is that the attraction style that I have seen consistently work really well for women who have not gotten the result they want and finally end up for the first time in their lives connecting to a high quality man who's pursuing them with passion, taking the steps to drive the relationship forward with her, without her having to do all the work and also ending up in something beyond a relationship that's short-lived but a long-lasting relationship that ends in marriage and beyond is this. Okay, so you start with a high-value woman, someone who owns her worth and her confidence and her radiance and you connect with men in such a way that you allow for emotional connection more so than physical connection and just strong chemistry of the non-lasting kind. You allow him to invest in the connection and work to get the result instead of getting the result without putting in the work through time, which is a key component. So you have a high value woman who creates strong emotional connection, allows the guy to work through time until there's something solid that develops into a real and sustainable possibility. Am I saying this changing your attraction style is sissy? It isn't. If it were easy, everybody would change it. But you have to start from the understanding that if what you're doing right now is falling for a specific type of guy without knowing why you're falling for him or imagining things or projecting more than you need to and it's ending up in that type of guy that you want as awesome as you think he is is not translating to a sustainable relationship then it's time to evaluate how can you do things differently even if it's not easy even if it requires discipline even if it requires getting uncomfortable 
so that you can, through time, rewire what you go for and get something far more powerful than you ever imagined. So step number one is raise the intensity of your life. Raise your vibration, raise your sense of aliveness, raise your experience of intensity. And here's why. If you've been falling for guys who are not corresponding back the same way, my hypothesis is you're falling for guys who are more charming, more exciting, more of the type of guys that you feel he's fun, he's friendly, he's uh, persuasive, and he's a great catch. Now, when a guy comes to offer you excitement and fun and something that is not really defined but seems to you like an adventure, and you are not experiencing enough intensity and adventure in your own life, it will be nearly impossible for you to say no to that. It's the equivalent of you going through the desert without water, somebody two weeks later bringing you a little glass of water with dog poop inside. If you, all you have is water with dog poop, you will drink it because it's that or death. In the same way, if a guy shows up with enough emotional intensity in your life and you don't have it, then your brain might say, he may not be a good guy for me, but your heart and your hormones will say, screw it, I'm going to go for this because I want to feel alive. So when you raise the intensity of your life first and foremost, what you're doing is inoculating yourself against guy who come, guys who come and show you a flashy object but don't have the sustenance. Instead of being able to say, I'm, instead of saying, I'm going to go for it no matter what, you can say, you know what? I have enough emotional intensity in my life. If this is not something that adds to the overarching a proposal that he's coming with, then I'm going to say no right now. And I can say no, I can walk away from this because even if he doesn't show up in my life, I have enough emotional intensity and adventure that can sustain me until I connect with somebody else who might be a better fit. Step number two is raise your level of radiance, which is the level of light you have inside of yourself expressed into the world through your movement, through your smile, through your interactions, through your vulnerability. And why am I asking you to raise your <laughs> radiance because when you raise your radiance two things take place one you develop more options so guys who may have overlooked you guys who may have connected with you who are great quality guys who are not pursuing you might feel the one degree shift they need to feel as a punch in the heart to go from she's interesting to how can I get to know her that small degree is based many times on radiance which means you expressing more aliveness to the outside world instead of holding all your cards close to your chest because you're afraid of somebody hurting you. It means you open up more gradually, but you open up more than you are opening right now. And then you allow the step-by-step -step process of if a guy is safe, if he's showing you what you need, if he's pursuing you with aliveness, but also with respect, then you open up a little bit more. Step number three, and this is crucial, you need to make a firm commitment to stop projecting and start hypothesis testing. What does this mean? So many women connect to a guy and they confuse the feeling of my hormones are off the hook with he's my soulmate because it feels so special. And sometimes it's nothing more than excitement. It's nothing more than the gap between your, the lack of excitement in your life and what this guy is bringing to the table or a projection of sorts that says, hey, this guy is, has this body type. He has this business going on for him. So obviously he's giving me attention. He's a great catch. Now, when you start hypothesis testing, it means that instead of saying, I met the most amazing guy, you will say, I met a guy who appears to be amazing. When a guy asks you out and you feel like, oh my God, he's the best thing that I've seen in years, you say to yourself, he appears to be the best thing I've seen in years. Why? Because you don't know him at all. You have one moment of connection. You have a lot of excitement, but you have a big projection that's taking place. When the projection becomes clear that it's not the law of the land, but it's maybe something that could or could not be true, you proceed with more caution. It doesn't mean that you never trust him in any way. It just means that you don't trust him blindly, that you don't go from zero to 60 miles an hour in two seconds. Step number four is you ask deeper questions up front. Why is this important? Because if you ask deeper questions up front, you will stop connecting with so many of the men that you have been hurt by in the past. Because when you ask a question that's clear and specific regarding their purpose for dating or the, what they're seeking a relationship or their thoughts on marriage or their thoughts on children or where they are in life right now in terms of 
being able to move forward with something powerful like a relationship, they will share with you through what they say and what they not say, through their body language, through their specificity or maybe generality, how thoughtful they have been about relationship and how ready they are to commit to something that's going to require a lot of work and a lot of energy, which is a, a relationship, like a marriage. It requires so much. If the guy is at a stage in his life where he's excited to connect with you, but he has zero level of urgency to take that deeper and you don't ask him the right questions, you'll be strung along making the projection that he wants what you want when the truth is he is a guy and you as a woman, he has more time to work out his stuff, especially if you want a family. Why? Because he could have children biologically, theoretically in his 80s and you can't. Beyond the children or no children, you want to make sure that through asking powerful questions early on, the guy that you're connecting with really shares your values and the same level of interest into a relationship. There are so many women who are afraid of asking the right questions because they might turn him off. And gosh, if I turn this guy off that I've already not hypothesized but told myself he's the best thing that's ever happened to me and he goes away, I'm left with nothing. This whole thing is about reworking your way of being so that you have more options and you stop falling for the scarce BS belief that this is the only option you have and if he doesn't show up for you, God knows when the next guy will come around. It's about you showing up in such a strong way that you develop more options and that you can get what you want. Even if this one guy that you seem so intent on wanting him to commit to you doesn't show up, somebody else will based on how you're showing up. Do not date exclusively. So many women are afraid of dating more than one guy at a time because they feel like they're being unfaithful or they feel like they are being weird or they feel like they're in some way, shape or form are doing something wrong. So when you date exclusively from the beginning, you have a higher likelihood of things not just not working out, but you feeling far more needy and putting more pressure on him than you need. So here's what happens when you don't date exclusively. You date a guy who seems to be super strong and showing up. He stops calling you for a week or two. Instead of you freaking out and putting all your eggs in one basket, you continue dating other men who continue showing up strong for you. So when this guy comes back, you have an option. Do I want to take this guy back? Do I want to consider his, why he disappeared for two weeks? Or do I want to move forward and on with my life? Because the more a guy shows up through time, the more you'll know who he really is versus who you imagine him to be. Step number six is don't have sex early on. Hold off on sex until you're exclusive and hold off on physical contact as long as you can for many reasons. Number one, because if the guy has to work to get to know you and he develops an emotional connection with you before he has sex with you, he's going to be far less likely to forget about you or leave you or put you in the category of fun but not wife material. Unfortunately, that's how it works. I wish I could tell you it's different, but I'm sharing with you how the world works versus how I wish it worked. So when you don't have sex early on, you allow for emotional connection to develop, but on your side of things, you don't create an attachment that's stronger than the actual connection that exists. When you have sex early on, you might delude yourself into thinking you know him better than you do, or he's better than he is, or might miss on some gigantic red flags that your brain is sensing, but your heart is saying, you know what? Forget about them. The sex will be worth it. The connection will be worth it. The validation will be worth it. And then you end up getting in a lot more trouble and feeling attached to a guy who's not good for you and finding it really hard to break off even if he's disrespectful, even if he doesn't pursue you, even if you're more into him than he's into you. That's where a lot of women fall for men who are not good for them and are not even sure how it happened. It happened because you projected more than existed and you allowed the emotional connection not to take place, but the physical connection made you feel attached to someone that you don't know, but in your mind and heart you feel you know. The last step, if you do this consciously, and I know it's hard, but if you follow this one step, your life will change. Only invest in men who consciously and consistently pursue you. I introduced my law of zero on one of my past videos, which basically goes something like this. If the kind of guy you're interested in, if he's an incredible guy, he's seven foot tall, he's the strongest man you've ever met, and he's also uh, rich, and he's also an actor, and he's also an activist, and he's a kind soul, all those things, imagine that perfect dude. 
if he doesn't pursue you, you can multiply that guy's time zero and that is what he's worth to you. Any number multiplied by zero turns into zero. So the best guy on paper who doesn't have an interest in pursuing you or who's not ready for a deep relationship of the kind you want, multiply it times zero and that's, a, that's the value of him in your life. And sometimes it's a negative value instead of zero. So my recommendation is only choose to say this guy is great for me if he's interested in a relationship that's as deep as the one you want and consciously pursuing you. If he's not doing that and you stop reminding him of your existence, uh, if you stop trying to get him to connect with you, you sh continue showing up in life, disconnect from him, show up with other guys, he might wake up one day and say, you know what, I miss her, but if he doesn't, you still get what you want. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful to you. And if it is, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing. If you wanna take these concepts further, as I shared earlier, and embody the change instead of just thinking the change, Click on the first link in the description of this video. You'll be taken to a page where you can enter your name and email and start watching my free training right away. If you enjoy this video, click like or thumbs up. <laughs> uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified of new episodes as they come out. And last but not least, if you're watching right now what I'm sharing, this resonates as truthful to you. And you say to yourself, I, I get this, but I need some help in actually making it happen. I've been burned too many times. And I'm not sure, I mean, I don't want to put myself out there to be burnt again. And I want help and assistance to get this result in a fraction of the time. Second link on the description of this video will allow you to connect with me, apply to see if we can work together. And if we can, I'll read your application, I'll reach back to you and we'll connect to find out how I can help you get this much faster and with less pain than your current trajectory. Trajectory. <laughs> Thank you so much for connecting with me, for allowing me to your heart and to your home into your space. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.